If you're looking to break something, you're going to need force. And for that, you're going to need an object with mass. No, no, something like, let's say, a pumpkin. Add to that mass a form of acceleration, in this case gravity, and boom, you've got force. Now, change the accelerant, the force changes. Change the mass, the force changes again. Now, force alone doesn't lead to breaking stuff. The next part to all this is resistance. You see, if you have a chunk of mass, like this kid, and enacting an acceleration, gravity, you have to generate a force greater than the resistance of the thing that you're trying to break. In this case, the surface of the water. However, if you increase the resistance, as in, let's say, changing the water to ice, well... Sis chill. Kick it. Now, when you're dealing with physics, there are three responses that an object will have when a force is applied to it. The first is elasticity. That means that the object temporarily changes shape before returning to its original shape. What? Take this girl, for instance. I don't know about her, but the ball definitely exhibits some elasticity. The second response is plasticity. That means an object permanently changes shape without actually breaking, like when you dent or bend metal. Okay. And the third response is full-out fracture. Now that's when an object finally breaks. Okay, that's not um, doing it. I'm not sure what the deal is with these car windows. Can we just see something breaking? Thank you. Okay, so let's recap. First, you need to create a force starting with mass, like a fist. And add acceleration, in this case, super karate muscle power, and always make sure that your force is greater than the resistance of the object that you're trying to break. Here we have a pathetic stack of bricks. Oh, and aim. You gotta aim. Kick it.